Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to build a very simple filament diameter sensor. By the end of this video we will cover how a filament diameter sensor works and how to build one. We will also discuss if you really need one and why you probably don't, but you may end up making one just for fun just like I did. So let's get started. As the name suggests, filament diameter sensor gives us information about the diameter of our 3D printing filament. Before we start, please keep in mind that there are many different ways to build a filament diameter sensor, and each one of them comes with different sets of pros and cons. For example, the sensor we are going to build today is very low cost and easy to build. And it is measuring filament diameter mechanically, which means it is making contact with the filament while measuring the diameter. Now, this will be okay for most applications like everyday 3D printing, checking the diameter of your self-extruded filament, and so on. But for certain applications, like measuring the diameter of the filament that is coming out of your filament extruder that is still hot, you might prefer a non-contact or optical filament diameter sensor, mainly because there is a less risk of it deforming your freshly extruded filament. By the way, leave a comment if you would like to see me build an optical or non-contact filament diameter sensor and also hit subscribe to see when that video goes live. Before we start, I want to mention that the filament diameter sensor you see here is based on the design that was published a while back by Thomas from Made with Layers channel. The link to his video and the original design are in the video description. He chose to name his sensor Infidel, which stands for Inline Filament Diameter Estimator Low Cost. And to honor his original work and acknowledge that this design is heavily inspired by that work, I chose to call my sensor Binfidel which you probably guessed stands for Wi-Fi Filament Diameter Estimator Low Cost. Here is the cross section of our sensor. The idea is quite simple. We have the sensor body that is fixed and then we have this arm that can move up and down. The sensor body has this channel through which filament will move and it will reach these two bearings. The bottom one is fixed and cannot move, but the top one will move in order to allow the filament to pass through. But since it's attached to the sensor arm, it will also move the sensor arm up. Now, on the end of the sensor arm, we have a magnet, and on the sensor body, in line with the magnet, we also have a linear hole effect sensor. We will use this hole effect sensor to measure the strength of the magnetic field that is produced by this magnet. We can correlate the strength of the magnetic field to the distance between the magnet and the hole effect sensor. Since the movement of the sensor arm is relatively small, we can assume that the whole effect sensor measurements are going to be relatively linear and proportional, but more importantly, we can correlate the value to the distance between the two bearings, and the distance is equivalent to the filament that is passing between them. Inside the sensor, there is also a little spring that we had to push the lever down in order to make sure both bearings are always touching the filament so that our readings are accurate. And that pretty much covers the mechanical design of the sensor. Now let's take a look at the electronics design, which is even simpler. Over here we have a USB-C connector that provides power and data to our board. Then we have a voltage regulator that regulates 5 volts from the USB down to 3.3 volts that is needed by the rest of the board. Then we have our whole effect sensor and analog to digital converter, which takes the voltage reading from the whole effect sensor and converts it to a digital value that we can read over I2C. And finally, we have the brains of our sensor, which is the ESP32 microcontroller. The firmware that runs on ESP32 is basically split into two parts. One is constantly taking readings from the whole effect sensor, converting those readings to millimeters and keeping track of things like average value, minimum, maximum, and so on. And the second part is basically handling requests from the user or third-party integration. These are requests to get the latest reading or to calibrate the sensor and so on. As always, all the design files for this project are open source, open hardware, and available on GitHub if you want to take a look. So I won't go too much into detail because I think this video would be too long for this very simple sensor. But if you have questions or would like me to spend more time explaining this in the future videos, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Now, the reading of our filament sensor should be repeatable, which is obviously what we want. But there will be variation from one sensor to another because they are not identical. Mainly due to slight differences in assembly, accuracy of 3D printed parts, magnet strength, hole effect sensor variation and so on. But the important thing is that every sensor should give repeatable readings. 
And as long as they give repeatable readings, we can address slight build or part variation by calibrating our sensor before using it. The calibration process is very simple. We will need two round items that we know or can measure the diameter of. And you want one of them to have a smaller diameter than your filament, and the other one should have a larger diameter than your filament. In my example, I'm going to use these two drill bits. I have measured their diameter and also labeled them so that I don't forget it later. My filament diameter should be in the 1.75 mm range, which is in between these two, so we are good to go. Now, if we go to the sensor web UI, we can see that our sensor readings do not make any sense. But that's expected because we have not calibrated our sensor yet. We can go to the settings page and here you can see all the information about the sensor. At the top we have a list of our calibration points. Initially we will have only two. These are hard coded by firmware and we can compile our firmware to support as many calibration points as we like. Although I think that you will most likely only need two additional calibration points. Here we have the create calibration point section that explains how to create a new calibration point or update an existing one. And at the bottom we have some firmware information that might come in handy during debugging or development. So let's create our first calibration point. I'm inserting the smaller drill bit into the filament diameter sensor and we can see that our ADC value has changed. Because I know that this drill bit is exactly this diameter, I'm going to say that this ADC value should be calibrated to this diameter in millimeters and click calibrate. We can see now that the new calibration point has been created. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the larger drill bit. Click calibrate and we can see that both of our calibration points have been created. And that's it, now our filament diameter sensor is calibrated, so let's go back and test it. I'm going to use my calipers to check the diameter of this filament sensor before inserting it into a sensor, and we can see what is the diameter. Now if we insert it into our filament diameter sensor, we should get the exact same value. And you can see that we do. So now our sensor is calibrated and ready to go. The nice thing is that we can use our new sensor in many different ways. We can use the API to retrieve data from the sensor over Wi-Fi, so it does not have to be tethered to the 3D printer or the control board. Other option is we can connect it over USB and read sensor information from there. ESP32 also supports Bluetooth, so we could use that if we prefer it over Wi-Fi. There is also this expansion header which you can use to create your own add-on board. For example, you can convert it to RS-485 or CAN bus device or use it for something else. But regardless of how you plan on using it, our filament diameter sensor is done and ready to go. I personally don't really need this sensor, so I don't really have a good use case to show you. Luckily, while I was making this video, Stefan from CNC Kitchen made this awesome video where he uses the Winfidel sensor that I sent him a while back. So I will link his video in the description if you want to check out Winfidel in a more real-world application. So with that said, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. If you did, please leave a comment and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. That's all for today's video, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!